All right, first we need to take everything out of the closet, including these horrible wire shelves. I'm Brad from Fix This Build That. Let's get started. The lack of good storage in this closet has led to things getting tossed in the corner and lost for years. And if we don't fix it, I'm afraid we're going to lose something more than a pizza-loving Elmo. But after removing all the clothes and the junk, it was time to get these wire shelves out. You might want to just start ripping these out, but don't do that. If you do that, you're going to leave big holes in the wall. Believe me, I've done it before, but there's a simple trick to pulling these out that's going to make it go really smoothly and you'll just have a small hole to fill. If your closet has a vertical support like this one, you'll need to remove that first by unscrewing the clips. Now the shelves are attached to the wall by a series of clips and brackets. Start by removing the angled supports below. Now here's the trick for easy removal. Use a pair of pliers to grip the nail head and pull it out. And then you can do the same thing to the wall anchor. And since the nail isn't there expanding it anymore, it'll come out cleanly. Remove any clips that are screwed into the stud, and then you should just be left with the open J-style clips along the back. Now you can pop the wire shelving out of these clips with a few quick pulls or with a mallet. Now these J-clips are a little trickier since you can't just grab the nail head. So use a putty knife or a screwdriver to pry the nail out of the recess first. Then you can go ahead and grab the nail and remove the wall anchors just like before. And this method works really well and it just takes a little patching and sanding to get the wall prepped afterwards. And I didn't show the end brackets because those are very easy to remove. They're similar to the angled supports below. And with a blank slate, I grabbed some plywood from the store and I started building. I'll talk more about the plywood selection in just a bit though. I broke down the large sheets to make them more manageable using my track saw and some rigid foam insulation on top of my table saw in the new outfeed table. Now you could continue making all the cuts with a circular saw, but using a table saw if you have one is going to be way easier. Now the first piece that I'm building is the base of the center unit, which will have four drawers and be like a small dresser. I cut the parts for the carcass and then I took the sides of my bench for some notches. I made the layout lines for a toe kick on the front of the dresser, and instead of having to cut out and remove the baseboards, I'll cut a notch in the back to go around the baseboards. Now the bottom of the cabinet will rest right above both of these cutouts, so it won't have to be modified. A jigsaw makes quick work of the toe kick. One thing to note though, when you're cutting tight curves with a jigsaw, it helps to have a nice thin blade. I started off with this larger blade, and it couldn't make the turn on that first notch I cut. But I switched over to this thin one, and it worked way better. I'll have a link to this as well as all the things that I used today down below in the description. The sides are joined by the bottom and four supports which will also help to attach to the top and secure the cabinet to the wall. I cut the parts to size and then I went over to the bench for some more joinery. I'm using pocket holes for the cabinet for quick sturdy joints and I finally upgraded my old K4 to this K5 jig. It is definitely faster to use and more convenient with that front lever versus the rear one. I mentioned the new outfeed table earlier, and I got to take advantage of the extra width that I built into it. Now, assembling on my mobile workbench wouldn't work because it was just too skinny, but the new outfeed table worked great because of the extra width I gave it. I secured the bottom with pocket screws, and then I flipped the cabinet over, and I secured the top supports as well, using large clamps to hold everything tight. The back supports got attached to the sides, and I also put two screws through the top and the bottom to hold them in place as well. Now this prevents any bowing and separation when I'm going to be securing it to the wall. I pulled the carcass off the table and I started in on the drawers for the cabinet. Now we decided to go with four medium sized drawers which would be perfect for folded pants, shorts, or Scooby Doo themed tidy whities which were all my jam in the 80s. But underoos were pretty sweet too. I cut the parts to size to account for the full extension drawer size that I'll be using. I've got a whole video showing how I size and I make these simple drawers if you want some more details on that. Now the drawers go together with pocket screws which will hold well into the three quarter inch plywood. While I'm assembling these drawers here, I wanted to show you real quick the plywood that I'm using. This is three quarter inch radiata pine. I was at Home Depot and I was looking at the different types of plywood and you might be confused when you're looking at those. There's all the way up to like 55 bucks and I think this one was close to 27 or 29. I'll have that right down here, uh, dollars. And basically you can get away with the cheaper stuff because I'm gonna be painting this. So if you're gonna be staining it, you're gonna have to go up higher on that scale of the plywood. For this project, I need three sheets of three quarter inch plywood for my and saving $20 a sheet is going to save me 60 bucks overall and that is a huge savings. So remember that when you're buying plywood, if you're going to be painting it, you can go more towards that cheaper option, get the sanded ply or even the radiata pine like I did. Look for some good sheets that don't have a lot of warp to them or flat. If you can find them, you'll be saving some money and you can invest that in drawer slides or other hardware for the project. 
After the boxes were together, I cut four drawer bottoms from quarter inch plywood. I glued and nailed the bottoms in place, and this makes the drawer even stronger as it locks everything together. I finished out each drawer by routing a 45 degree chamfer on the edges of the bottom. This hides that quarter inch plywood bottom when viewed from the side and gives it a floating panel look. Now before installing the drawers, I went ahead and put a couple coats of white paint on the first several inches of the inside of the cabinet, which is all you're ever going to see when it's in use. Now after the paint was dried, I installed the full extension slides using a small spacer for the bottom slide. After that one was in, I used an offcut of the drawer parts to space the rest of the slides and I attached them up on both sides. With the slides in place, I could put the drawers in and attach them to the slides right there in the cabinet. And I prefer this method of installing the drawers, but you could also use a drawer slide jig to put them in as well if you're more comfortable with that. And but if you want all the measurements for these drawers and the entire unit, I do have plans available. You can check the link down below in the description and get custom cut diagrams, parts list, and step-by-step -step instructions to help you along the way. Next, I cut the drawer fronts to go on the outside of the boxes and the top for the cabinet. I'm using a plywood top with a solid wood trim on the front to give it a more custom look. I use the panel to mark the length of the trim and then I cut it to size to fit. I attached the trim with pocket screws, but you could also glue and nail it in place as well. Now before moving to the hutch, I put a coat of paint on the cabinet and the top so it could be drying while I build the rest. Now the hutch is just under four feet tall, so I cut a full length section in half with my track saw. Then I ripped the sides down. Hmm. <laughs> ah yes, table saws work much better with the blade above the table. <laughs> While I was cutting the sides, I also went ahead and rough cut the parts for the top, the back supports, and the three adjustable shelves that will go in the hutch. And then I pulled out Fred to cut all the parts to final length. Now since the sides are so long, I couldn't use a stop block or the fence on my table saw. So instead, I stacked them together and I flushed up the end opposite of the blade. Now I could cut both parts at once based upon the mark on the top panel, and this gives me two identical pieces. You could do the same thing gang cutting with a circular saw as well. I cut the top and the shelves to final size as well. And they ended up just longer than my sled, so I had to mark them and cut them as well instead of using the stop block. The supports for the back of the hutch are similar to the ones for the cabinet. They'll be attached with pocket holes along with the top piece. These will be facing the top or the back of the closet, so you don't have to worry about plugging any of these pocket holes since they won't be seen. Now you could make fixed shelves for the hutch, but I prefer adjustable shelves. Because you never know when you might want to adjust that shelf just an inch and a quarter higher. <laughs> but honestly, I'll put these in place and then never move them again. Let me know in the comments, do you actually move adjustable shelves, or are you kind of like me, and want the flexibility for peace of mind, but never use it? After drilling the shelf pin holes, I painted the sides in the top before assembly. And it's way easier to roll the parts as panels versus working into brushing into corners. And when they were dry, I clamped the top between the sides and I secured it with pocket screws. And because the paint wasn't fully cured just yet, I used wax paper between the sides and the clamp heads. Now this keeps the clamps from sticking to the sides under pressure or embedding any small wood chips into the soft finish. Now I added one back support to the top of the hutch, securing it to the top panel as well. And I put another one right there at the bottom. Now the weight of the hutch is going to transfer to the base cabinet, but you still want to secure it tightly to the wall with these pieces. And next I wanted to add a little visual heft to the hutch, so I grabbed some more of the poplar trim that I had before to make some face frames. I'm going to be using this inch and a half hardwood to finish off the front of the hutch. It's really going to give it a nice feel. It's going to make it look more substantial and just really be nice. If you don't want to do that route, you could also just edge band this or paint right over it. If you don't want to use any solid edge wood, you can do that too and it's going to look fine. I cut the top trim so it overhung on each side and then I attached it to the hutch with glue and some me nails. And then I used a long piece of trim and I marked it and cut it to length to fit the side of the hutch. I used a combination square to measure and set the distance between the top trim piece and the side panel. Then I could use that setup to evenly space the trim all down the length of the panel, just putting the combination square in place on the side. I repeated the process on the other side, attaching it again with glue and my nailer. Now the nails do leave a little divot, so I filled those with wood putty, and then I came back and painted the trim to match the hutch. And next I switched back to finishing up the cabinet. Now the top gets attached from underneath and then I could mount the drawer fronts. I drilled the holes for the hardware that I'll be using and these holes will let me easily space and mount the fronts as well. 
Now typically I start from the bottom, but since that top trim is flush, I wanna make sure that I got the reveal line at the top right and then work down from there. I used an eighth of an inch spacer on the top of the drawer front and then I screwed that front to the drawer box temporarily with some pocket screws. Now with it held in place, I could open the drawer without the front moving and then permanently secure it from the inside through those holes that I drilled earlier in the drawer box. Now to finish it off, I removed the front screws, drilled all the way through the drawer box and installed the drawer poles in those holes. Now this is by far my favorite method of installing drawer fronts and it lets you hone in on those perfect reveals without a lot of fuss. In just a few minutes, I had all the hardware attached and the cabinet was done. Now the last part of the organizer system was the shelves and supports to hold them as well as hold the clothes rods. I cut the pieces to rough size and then got to painting. All right, before taking this upstairs, I put the hutch up here just to see how it looked. And I realized that I have a small issue that I didn't consider. And that's this front here. So I'm gonna be attached to the wall in the back through these cleats. But on the bottom here, there's no support to hold this from moving. And I don't really have a way to screw it in from underneath because of the sides. So what I'm gonna do is get a dowel and I'm going to drill into the top as well as into the bottom of this upper side here and have that for just a reference pin basically. So that if it gets bumped, it's not gonna move all around. I flushed up the hutch with the back and the side of the cabinet where it would be when it's installed. And then I put tape on each piece and I drew a line across these pieces on each side. This will help align the holes accurately. And then I measured in 3 eighths of an inch and I drilled a hole for the dowel pin using a piece of blue tape to let me know how deep to drill. The key when drilling the holes in the cabinet and the hutch is trying to get them as straight as possible. And if they are tilted in any direction, then it'll throw off the alignment or possibly even not make them fit at all. I used a small square to check the progress of the hole to make sure I was going true. But if you do get off a bit, you can always widen the hole or worst case, plug it and redrill it. This worked really well though, and it gave the front of the hutch that support that it needed so it wouldn't move around if it was ever bumped. So I finally made my way upstairs to install this center console, and while I'm anchoring it to the wall, I'm gonna fix this squeaky closet hinge that I found with the help of today's sponsor, WD-40. All right, so if you're like me, if anything squeaks, you immediately go to WD-40. But WD-40 has been around for a long time. This is what I grew up seeing my granddad and my dad use to fix things around the house. And this is a brand that we're all familiar with. But what you might not be familiar with is they have a whole other line of products under their WD-40 specialist line. This is the dirt and dust resistant dry lube. And actually this is one that I'm gonna use on the hinges because not only does it repel dirt and dust, but it stays on longer. So prevent the squeaks from happening and it's not gonna attract dirt and dust like a grease would if you try to put that in there. If you wanna check out more about the WD-40 Specialist line, I'm gonna have a link down below in the description. So go check them out. I think you're gonna find something that you could use in your shop or household. Now the base cabinet went in fairly smoothly other than having to use wall anchors because apparently 32 inch on center studs is a thing in this closet. But the hutch was a little bit of another story. There was a sizable hump in the wall right in the middle of the hutch on the right side. I used a compass to match the largest gap between the wall and the hutch, and then I ran it along the edge of the entire length of the side to show where I needed to remove material. Then I took the hutch down to the shop and I sanded to the line with my belt sander. And when I brought it back upstairs, it wasn't a perfect fit, but it was good enough to line up those dowel pin holes and be sure it was flush to the back wall. After leveling the unit, I secured the hutch to the wall again using wall anchors. Now from there, I could attach the upper and lower shelves using a cleat on the hutch, back wall, and side wall. I made the top shelf flush with the top of the hutch for a continuous upper shelf for some long-term storage. I also went with two bays of short hanging on each side of the hutch since my son doesn't need any long hanging right now but you could easily remove the lower shelf on one side and use that side for upper long hanging and have a shoe rack or just other shelves and bins below it. I installed some brackets to hold the metal rods and then I cut the metal rods to size and put those in place. After installing the center shelves, Susan decorated it for some beauty shots and we were in business. This thing was looking great. This is the last time it's ever gonna look this nice. We're doing a larger closet renovation soon and the video is gonna be right there when it goes live. But if you wanna build this one, I do have plans available. There's a link down below in the description for you to check out and I'm gonna catch you in the next video.